In today's video, I'm going to be doing another Clash Royale tier list for the month of April. The meta has changed quite a bit ever since the Dagger Duchess was added to the game. In this tier list, I'm going to be ranking all the cards, evolutions, and the tower troops too. S tier is the highest rank a card can receive. It means it's extremely versatile and likely needs a nerf. A tier means the card is above average. B tier is around the higher end or average range. C tier is the lower end or just average range. D tier means the card is below average. And then F tier means the card is not versatile at all. And there's a high chance it needs a buff too. Starting off with the Barbarians, and just to note, these are the regular Barbarians. I'll be doing the evolutions towards the end. I'm going to put them in D tier. They can be pretty decent on defense sometimes, but for the most part, they're only used in Lava Hound decks right now. Bats I'm going to put in C tier because I'm not seeing a lot of minor Bat decks or Mega Knight Bat decks at the moment, so they're kind of a bit average now. Believe it or not, guys, in this meta, the healer is C tier because there's a lot of people using Golem Pump with the healer and Elixir Golem healer, and it's because of the Dagger Duchess because healer pairs very well inside of beatdown decks. The regular Battle Ram is going to go into D tier. For the most part, you're only going to be able to play it inside a Pekka Bridge Tham, and I feel like the main purpose of it is to eventually get to that Evolve version, which of course is significantly better. The regular bomber I'm going to put in C tier. I think the main reason people are using bomber right now is to get to that evolve one, which is absolutely broken. But the regular bomber is a fairly good counter to the goblin drill and you can use it in lava if you want to also. The bomb tower isn't as good as it was a couple months ago. Right now it is B tier because there's way more people choosing to use the Tesla. But with that being said, the bomb tower is still a great building and I would consider it above average. The bowler I'm going to put in A tier. It has been a very solid card recently. It's very good inside a goblin giant, a couple different giant graveyard variants. It's good with the goblin drill, E giant, and of course it's a very good counter to the goblin drill, which is one of the best win conditions at the moment. The cannon is going to join the bomb tower in B tier. It's a pretty good building inside of Royal Hogs and Hog, but it just gets outclassed by the Tesla and the Goblin Drill right now. Usually I put the cannon card in D tier, but I'm actually going to put it in F tier because the last couple months I have never really seen it at all. No one's even using it in Mortar. No one uses it in Bridge Spam anymore. There's just no reason to use the cannon card, so I can't put it higher than F tier. I think it could use a small buff. Clone is also going in F tier because no one even plays Lava Clone anymore because there's a lot of people that run Poison and Tornado, so there's just way too many counters to this card. Dark Prince is going to go in C tier. It's just kind of an average card. For the most part, people are playing it in Giant Graveyard. That's the main place I see it, but besides that, it isn't used in a lot of other decks. The Dark Goblin's going to go in D tier because no one really plays it in Mortar anymore. The only time I'm seeing it now is in Bait decks from time to time, but even that is pretty rare. The Earthquake is going to go in B tier. It's very good against buildings, especially the Elixir Collector, which so many people are using this meta. So you see the Earthquake paired very well inside of Hog, Royal Hog decks, and then sometimes you even occasionally see it with the Goblin Giant and Royal Giant, so fairly versatile. The Electro Giant is going to go in B tier. This is higher than I usually put it. In this meta, there's a lot of people running Golem E-Drag and Elixir Golem E-Drag, so it actually is a very strong support card at the moment. The Electro Giant, I'm going to put in C tier. Tier. I think it's an okay win condition, but I do think things like Lava Hound and Golem are better beatdown cards to use. But with that being said, there's definitely worse win conditions than the E Giant, so I think it's kind of about average among the other win conditions. Electro Spirit, I'm going to put in B tier. Definitely not the best spirit in the game, but it is pretty good, especially inside of Royal Giant Expo. We're seeing it a ton in this meta. Might sound a little harsh, but the E Wiz, I'm going to put in D tier because I kind of think of it like the Battle Ram. You pretty much only see this card inside a pack of bridge spam and because that's the only deck you see it in you're not going to see it too often and there's just so many other substitutes you could use for it instead the e-barbs are also going to go in d tier of course when you're on mid ladder and they're over level they can be pretty annoying but they're overall pretty easy to counter if you know what you're doing and they don't really pair that well in many decks you could see them from time to time in bridge spam or three musketeers but you could use other things instead they're not really a requirement Believe it or not, guys, we got our first S tier card, and this is the first time I've ever put the Elixir Collector in S tier, but it actually deserves it because there's so many decks at the top of ladder that are using the Elixir Collector, especially for how expensive of a card it is. You got a bunch of people running Giant Pump, there's Golem Pump, there's Elixir Golem Pump, there's Expo Pump, and there's probably even a couple other things I'm forgetting. The reason why the pump is so good right now is because of the Dagger Duchess. When you use the Elixir Collector in a Dagger Duchess deck, you can pump up 
up and your opponent isn't able to punish you like they'd be able to if you were running the princess tower. And if they decide to go for a minor on your pump, the duchess is going to melt it and kill it so quick compared to the princess tower that you're getting so much value from the pump, which is why at the moment it is one of the strongest cards in the game. The elixir golem, I'm going to put in D tier. I think it doesn't suck anymore and we see it from time to time, but the healer needs to be a tier higher than it because golem healer is used a lot and elixir golem healer is used a bit less than it. But with that being said, it is viable if you want to use it, especially with the elixir collector. The Executioner is going to be in C tier. It pairs very well with the Goblin Drill. That's why I think it's kind of average right now. But in a lot of decks, you're going to be way better off having the Bowler, which oftentimes gets a lot more value because it has more health. But that's not to say that the Executioner is bad or anything. I just think it's around in the middle of the pack. Fireball is going to go into A tier. I think it's a very solid spell. It might not be as good as Poison, but if you want direct damage, which you often are going to need in a lot of decks, it's very effective. It's going to be very good inside of Lava Hound, Expo, Pack of Bridge Spam, Drill, some giant decks we're seeing it in, and more. So it's a pretty decent and consistent spell. I'm going to be honest, guys, the regular Firecracker is not that good. Don't hate me for this because the Evolved one I'm going to put a lot higher, but the regular Firecracker is going to go into D tier. There's so many people using arrows in this meta, and I personally don't see her a lot ever since the Dagger Duchess was introduced because traditionally she's always played in cycle decks, and Hog Cycle and things along those lines are a lot worse now that the Duchess is in the game, which is why the Firecracker, I have it at only D tier. I don't really think she's that strong strong. The Fire Spirit's going to join the Electro Spirit in B tier. I think the Fire Spirit's very good, especially inside of Goblin Drill decks. I think Goblin Drill really helped revive the Fire Spirit because they pair so well together, but I do think there is a Spirit that is better than both of these two. The Fisherman's going to go in B tier because for the most part, you're only seeing it inside of Royal Giant decks and then maybe Goblin Giant from time to time, so not insanely versatile, but of course when it is played, it does get a lot of value in a lot of situations, especially because of the King activations and things along those lines. The Flying Machine is going to go in C tier. I don't see it all that much, maybe in Lava Hound from time to time, but there's not really many people running recruits anymore, which is why I can't put it much higher than C tier. The Balloon is going to go in A tier because there's so many people pairing it with the Lava Hound, and I think the Balloon is one of the strongest win conditions now because Beatdown is really good with the Duchess and against her, which is why you're seeing a return of Lava Hound, which means the Balloon itself is a very, very good win condition at the moment. The Freeze, I'm going to put in the F tier with the Clone. I used to put it in D tier because of Graveyard Freeze, but recently, the last month or so, there has pretty much been no one playing Graveyard Freeze, which is why I have it now in the F tier. The Furnace and the Barbarian Hut are also going to be joining the Freeze in the F tier because pretty much there's no reason to be playing these cards when Poison and Earthquake exist and you're just getting significantly more value from almost every other building in the game in pretty much every single circumstance. I never thought I'd see the day where I'd be putting Giant in S tier, but here we are. Pump Giant is one of the strongest decks in the game at the moment, and there's so many different variations of it that you can use. And then there's also Giant Graveyard, which of course is insanely strong as well. And again, the reason why is because of the Dagger Duchess. The Giant and Tanks in general are just so good against her, which is why about a quarter of everyone in the top 200 is using Giant at the moment, which is pretty insane, and it's probably the best win condition at the moment. The Giant Skeleton is going to go in B tier. Tanks are very good right now against the Duchess, and it recently got a health buff not too long ago, so we're seeing it a lot inside of Goblin Giant decks with the Goblin Drill, and then of course you could use it with Hog Cycle if you want, so it's pretty versatile at the moment. The Snowball I'm going to put in C tier. I think it's about average at the moment. Of course, it's very good inside of Giant Graveyard. I think that is the best synergy it has. Beyond that though, you don't see it a whole ton, so I'm not going to put it higher than C. The Goblin Barrel, I'm going to put in D tier. I think it's one of the worst win conditions in the game. It's something you see from time to time, but it's mostly players that are very good with it and know how to play it. But I don't really think it's meta at all just because of how many small spells there are, like the Log, the Barbarian Barrel that just take it out so easily. 
The Goblin Cage, I'm going to put in D tier. I don't think it's necessarily a bad card, but because there's not really anyone running Royal Recruits, there's not really any deck to use it in. Maybe you see it in some Balloon deck or E-Giant deck, but that's kind of it, and it doesn't really have to be played in those decks either. The Goblin Drill, without a doubt, is joining the Giant in S tier. For sure, one of the most broken win conditions in the game. Ever since it got that rework, we've all realized it has been insanely strong since then. There's so many different evolutions you can use with it. A lot of people prefer to use the Evolve Bomber with it, but you could run Evolve Knight if you want to, Evo Skellies, Evolve Tesla, Evolve Firecracker. You could use it with Poison. You could use it with Fireball. You can just mix and match so many different cards with it. So it is one of the most versatile win conditions in the whole game. And with it being so strong at the same time, it is no wonder why it is absolutely busted right now. The Goblin Gang is going to go in C tier. You only see it in time to time inside of Log Bait and Mortar decks. With that being said, I don't think it's a bad card necessarily, and it can get a lot of value in a lot of situations. It just doesn't pair super well in a ton of things. The Goblin Giant's going to go in B tier. Ever since it got those nerfs, it has definitely been balanced out since then, and people for sure have a preference of using the Giant over the Goblin Giant. With that being said, though, in this meta, you still see him from time to time, and he's probably around an average win condition at the moment. And no surprises here, the Goblin Hut is going in the F tier. In fact, it's even worse now that the Duchess is in the game because the Duchess pretty much fully counters the Goblin Hut on her own. The Goblins I'm actually going to put in A tier. The last few times I put them in S tier, but because it's a beatdown meta at the moment, I noticed there's been less people running them. Now, with that being said, defensively, they're still going to get a lot of value now that there's four Goblins, so I think they're an above average card without a doubt, but I can't justify putting them in S tier. The Golden Knight, I'm going to put in D tier. Even though he recently got buffed, I think that hardly helped him at all. And he is, in my opinion, at the moment, the worst champion in the game and could either use another small buff or the champions that are really strong just need to get a nerf in order for him to be a little bit better. Believe it or not, guys, the Golem is actually going in A tier. There's so many people using Golem Pump right now. And here's the thing. It's pretty versatile in terms of the Golem decks people are using because there's differences in the Golem decks. Some people are using the Evolve Knight, some are using the Evolve Zap, some are using the Evolve Bomber, some even the Evo Skellies, and then there's differences in the flying cards. Like some people might want to have Skeleton Dragons, others might want to have the Mega Minion or the Phoenix or the Electro Drag. So you get the point I'm making tons of different Golem variations among the people that are already using it, which is quite a lot. The Graveyard, I'm going to put in A tier. Don't get me wrong, I think it is one of the stronger win conditions in the game, but I can no longer put it in S tier because there's almost no one running Splash Yard. The only Graveyard deck I'm seeing at the moment is Giant Graveyard, but there's a lot of people running Giant decks that don't have the Graveyard, so I no longer think the Graveyard is broken. Baby Dragon's going to go in C tier. I think it's about average. Mostly, you're only going to see it inside of Lava Hound and Pekka Ram Rider, so it's not super versatile, but with that being said, it has a decent amount of hit points and the splash can be nice so it's kind of an average card and i'll actually say the same thing for the bandit at the moment mostly you're only seeing her inside of pekka i don't see her all that much anymore with the mega knight which is why i can't really put her much higher than c the Barbarian Barrel, I'm going to put in B tier. I actually don't think this meta, it's as good as it normally is because I'm not seeing it used as often inside of graveyard decks and things along those lines, but I do see it inside of Golem and with Pekka, you might see it, but it's not really played in a lot of the meta decks. Like you don't really see it with Giant and Goblin Drill right now, which are the two strongest win conditions in the game. And then obviously you're not going to see it inside of Air decks. So it kind of got toned down a little bit and now that's why it's in the B tier. The guards are going to go in A tier ever since they gave them that buff where they don't die to arrows anymore. Since then, they have been so much stronger and people prefer to use these over the Goblin Gang or the Barbarians in a lot of cases. So you typically see the guards inside of Lava Hound with the Goblin Drill and with the Miner. They're very good. So pretty versatile and very valuable. The Heal Spirit's going to be in D tier. There's hardly anyone using the Heal Spirit. It just doesn't pair well in any deck. You could use it in Bridge Spam if you really want to, or inside of Sparky if you really wanted to, but both of those decks aren't even really meta anyway, which is why hardly anyone is using it. Definitely the worst spirit by far. Ever since that Archer Queen got the buff where she stays invisible for a little while longer, she has been one of the strongest champions, which is why she's A tier. She still gets outshined by the Little Prince, but she's for sure very good inside of Expo, Royal Hog Cycle with the Hog Rider, and you might see her inside a Giant Graveyard, so pretty versatile and definitely very strong compared to a lot of the other 
champions. The Hog Rider I usually put in A tier, but right now it is B tier. It's worse because of the Duchess. There's less people using the Hog because the Hog gets absolutely melted if you're playing it on its own at the bridge and the Duchess player hardly has to play anything else to take it out. So every time you play the Hog Rider, you now need to make sure you get an Ice Golem or a Knight or some sort of tank in it, which oftentimes is pretty inconvenient, which is why it's a tier lower. The Hunter, I'm going to put in D tier. Pretty much the only place you're going to see him is Royal Giant. And even inside of Royal Giant, a lot of RG players prefer to use things like the Phoenix or the Little Prince over him. So he's not really a requirement even inside of RG. The Ice Golem is going to go in C tier. This is a little higher than I normally put it because tanks in general are good against the Duchess. So a lot of people are using the Ice Golem inside of minor decks because the Duchess uses all of her knives on top of the Ice Golem and then your minor can end up getting a lot chip damage after but for the most part you're only seeing it inside of minor so it's still not really that versatile the ice spirit is gonna go in s tier i just think it is for sure the best spirit in the game right now you're especially seeing it a ton with the goblin drill and with expo and with hog rider and pretty much any cycle deck typically tends to have the ice spirit over the other spirits in the game just because it gets so much value freezing everything for such a long time and it's just an incredibly versatile card the ice wizard i'm to put in D tier. It's pretty much only good inside of Ice Bow, so that is just a Expo deck that has the Ice Wizard in it, but you don't really have to use it. You could just use a more traditional Expo deck or Pump Bow, so he's not really that good. The Inferno Drag, I'm going to put in B tier. You most commonly see it inside of Lava Hound. I think that's the main thing it lacks. It lacks versatility because that's pretty much the only deck you see it in. But with that being said, in many matchups, it does get a ton of value, especially in this meta. It can be quite useful to have against things like a Golem. But the problem is there are a lot of resets to it, like the E-Drag and the Lightning, which kind of keep it in check. The Inferno Tower, I'm going to put in C tier. It's kind of okay in this meta because it's, of course, going to be good against the Lava Hound and the Golem, which has a high amount of usage at the moment, but it kind of makes your cycle a bit awkward because it's a more expensive building, but it's going to be decent inside of Log Bait and Drill decks. The Regular Knight, I'm going to put in A tier, and this is even just the normal one, not the Evolved one, because there's so many people using the Regular Knight inside of Goblin Drill and Expo decks that just prefer to have him as a tank and use other evolutions instead of him which shows even just the normal version has really good stats and value for his cost. The Lava Hound's going in A tier and I'm actually going to put it above the Balloon because there's some Lava decks that don't even have the Balloon that have the Miner in it but pretty much every Balloon deck is going to have the Lava in it in this meta and then there's so many different Lava variations you can use kind of like the Golem. There's a lot of people using Lava with the Evolved Valkyrie, some are using the Evolved Zap, some are using both of those two things, some are using the Evolved Barbarian, some are using the Evolved Bomber, so just tons of versions. Some people prefer to have a building like the Tombstone and others prefer or not to have a building so you can just kind of mess around and see what lava deck you want to run whatever your preference is kind of the Lightning, I'm going to put in A tier. There's a lot of beatdown decks running it at the moment. Of course, there's a lot of people running Giant with the Lightning, Goblin Giant with the Lightning. There's some people even using P.E.K.K.A. Ram Rider Lightning, and it's just a lot of the heavier decks. It's kind of their spell of choice. It's also nice that it kills the Little Prince, which is something the Fireball isn't able to do. And the Little Prince gets a big S tier. This is a card where it doesn't seem to matter how many times they nerfed it, it still remains on top and it is for sure probably a top three card in the game still, which is ridiculous. You can pair it in cycle decks. It's of course very good with the minor, with the goblin drill, but then you can pair it with heavier decks. There's so many people playing it with the giant, the goblin giant. You can even use it in things like golem it just it doesn't even matter how expensive how cheap the deck is what the deck archetype is you can pretty much always find a way to fit the little prince in it if you want to and the guardian ability is one of the main reasons it is super strong as well so just many reasons why this card is as good as it is the Lumberjack is going to go in D tier. You can use it inside of Golem. That is an option, but most support cards are going to be a better option than the Lumberjack, even inside of things like Golem. So that's why I can't really put it much higher than D tier. 
Magic Archer is actually going in D tier. It got a small buff to help it out, but still, even after that buff, it's never really been back to what it was before it ended up getting that massive nerf. You can use it inside of Miner or Goblin Drill if you want to, but the problem is the Evolve Bomber is just so much better when you have that as an option. You're never really going to want to use the Magic Archer because it does pretty much the same thing for less Elixir. The Mega Knight is going to go in D tier. There's pretty much no one running Mega Knight Wall Breakers anymore. And if you do want to run a Bridge Spam deck, P.E.K.K.A. Bridge Spam is just going to be a way better option because the P.E.K.K.A. is doing a lot more DPS than the Mega Knight. And the Mega Knight is just not really fitting well in any deck in this meta. The Mega Minion is going to go in C tier. It's worse than the Phoenix, but there's still a decent amount of people choosing to use the Mega Minion inside of things like Lava Hound and with the Giant just because it's cheaper. So their cycle is just a a tad bit quicker. The Mighty Miner is going to go in C tier. I think it's one of the weaker champions, but it's definitely better than the Golden Knight. And one of the things that really helped it out is the Goblin Drill coming back because the Mighty Miner, of course, pairs really well with the Drill. So oftentimes when you see the Mighty Miner, that's what it's paired with. But you don't have to use it with Drill. And besides Drill, you're not seeing it that much. The Miner, guys, I'm actually going to put in A tier. I really think because of the Goblin Drill being as strong as it is, I can't justify putting the Miner into S tier. Now, with that being said minor poison is still good you can use minor with the lava hound and some people are using giant minor but i just don't think the minor is as effective as it was and a lot of it is because of the duchess too you can't really play the minor on its own anymore because it just gets absolutely melted by the duchess if she has her bar filled up Minion Horde's going to go in D tier. There's not really any deck where you're using it in in this meta where it's really a requirement. And there's just a lot of people using things like Arrows and Poison and Evolve Zap, which just counter it so easily. The minions, though, are certainly a lot better than it. And they're going to go into B tier because there's a good amount of people using them in things like Giant Graveyard, Lava Hound, and even Goblin Giants. So they get a decent amount of usage. And when you play against something like Arrows, that's technically an even trade, three for three. So they're still able to get some value before they die. The mini P.E.K.K.A. is going to go in D tier. There's not really anyone using Sparky, and besides Giant Graveyard, you don't really see the mini P.E.K.K.A. ever, and usually in Giant Graveyard, you're going to see the Dark Prince or something along those lines used over the mini P.E.K.K.A. And probably no surprises here, the Mirror's going right into F tier, for sure one of the worst cards in the game, because why do you want to have to spend more Elixir to play the same thing, especially because it oftentimes makes your cycle awkward, and there's very few circumstances where you want to play the same thing again. The Monk is actually going to go into D tier. I really don't think that health buff helped it all that much. And between the Golden Knight and the Monk, I actually don't really know which is better between the two. I mean, maybe you could use the Monk inside of Royal Giant if you really wanted to, but because it's a pretty expensive champion, it kind of makes your cycle a bit awkward. The Mortar guys, I'm actually going to put in C tier. I believe it's around an average win condition right now because of how much the meta shifted. Usually I put it a lot higher than that, but I'm not seeing more order too too much anymore and I think a large part of it is because the miner's a little bit worse and there's so much goblin drill and the mortar doesn't really pair that well with the goblin drill it pairs much better with something like a tesla now of course that means the mortar is still viable if you want to use it and there's a few different variations you could play of it but I just think currently it is not in the best spot the Mother Witch, I'm going to put in D tier. There's not really any deck that you need to use her in. You could run her in Bridge Spam if you want, like inside of a P.E.K.K.A. deck, but because there's less people running Graveyard this meta, there's even less of a reason to use her, which is why she's not really that strong. The Musketeer is also going to go into D tier because it's kind of like, why would you use the Musketeer when you can use the Archer Queen or the Little Prince that are just significantly better? It's kind of the same situation as the E-Wiz. There's just so many substitutes and cards that are significant better. The arrows guys, I'm actually going to put them in S tier. Normally I put them in A, but they are being used so much right now in a variety of decks. They're using a couple different giant decks, giant pump, but you also see them of course inside of giant graveyard. You see them in some P.E.K.K.A. decks now. You see them with Lava Hound. I even see them in some Expo decks, which is crazy, but then especially with the Goblin Drill, many different variations of Drill. You can kind of mix and match different cards with the arrows and the Drill. They just have such a large radius and very, very consistent. Assistant. 
The Night Witch is going all the way up in A tier, and the reason why is because in almost every single giant and golem deck right now, you are seeing the Night Witch. She is just an insane support card in those decks. You also see her with Elixir Golem. I even see her from time to time in a couple off-meta drill decks, and she just gets so much value when there's a tank in front of her. The P.E.K.K.A. guys, I'm going to put in B tier. I think the buff definitely helped her out a little bit. We are seeing her more now. I see some P.E.K.K.A. Ram Rider from time to time. P.E.K.K.A. Evolve Battle Ram. Now, with that being said, she for sure is not in the A tier range. She's not good enough for that, but I consider her to be kind of average right now and used a fair amount. The regular archers I'm going to put in D tier. I honestly think they're pretty bad. The evolved archers are okay, but the regular ones are pretty awful because of how many people are running arrows in this meta, and there's pretty much no deck where they really get good synergy in any way besides stuff like Expo. The Phoenix guys, I actually think made a return to S tier. The last few tier lists, I put it in A, but I think it's back to S now because in this meta, it is so good inside of all the giant pump decks. It's very good inside of golem decks, inside of Lava Hound decks, even inside of Royal Giants. So because it's a beatdown meta, it's no surprise that the Phoenix made a return to S tier for how versatile it is inside of beatdown decks. The Poison, of course, is going into the S tier. I think it's about as good as Arrows right now. In fact, there's a lot of Poison decks that have the Arrows in it too. It's insane with the Goblin Drill. It, of course, is still very good with the Miner. I even see some people using Expo Poison. That is how good the Poison is at the moment. And then, of course, it counters a lot of the annoying cards in this meta. It's going to be very good against the Night Witch. And it's going to be a fairly decent trade too against things like Pump. The Prince is going to go in D tier, even though Giant has made a comeback, unfortunately Giant Prince has certainly not made a comeback and is not really used that much. The Princess is also going into D tier because Bait is not in the best place at the moment. Believe it or not, Rage is also going into D tier. I think it really fell off. There's not really anyone playing it, and a large part of it is because the Goblin Giant decks that are being used in this meta don't even have the Rage in them. They are usually being played with the Lightning, so there's really no deck to be using the Rage in. The Ram Rider I'm also going to be putting into D tier because pretty much she's only played with the P.E.K.K.A. But the thing is, some people using the P.E.K.K.A. are using the Battle Ram over the Ram Rider. So both of these two win conditions are kind of getting split, which means both of them are not really a requirement. Believe it or not, guys, I'm going to be putting the Rascals into F tier. This is kind of a bold move, but I genuinely think they are very, very bad at the moment. It's kind of the same case as the Cannon Cart. There's literally no reason to play them. Even inside of bait decks, there really isn't ever a scenario where you would want to have the Rascals inside of your deck. They have just really fallen off quite a lot, especially now that there's all these evolutions in the game. The Rocket, I'm going to put in D tier. There's some people using it inside of Expo and with the Drill, but for the most part, there's way better spells to be using with those two cards than the Rocket. The Royal Delivery is going to be a bit better in C tier because there's more people using it inside of Drill than the Rocket, and then of course you also see it inside of Piggy sometimes, so I think it's kind of around an average spell at the moment. The Royal Ghost is going into A tier, for sure a very versatile card right now. First of all, that invisibility and splash aspect of it is very useful in a lot of situations. It's very good with the miner. It's very good with the drill. It's good inside of Royal Giant, of course. And then, of course, you see it inside of P.E.K.K.A. So very versatile and quite good inside of this meta. Okay, so the regular Royal Giant is going to go into D tier. I believe the only reason why people use the Royal Giant is when they have it evolved, but the standard one that doesn't have that health boost is practically useless in a lot of situations, which is why I have the regular version in D. The Royal Hogs are going to go in C tier. There's pretty much no one running recruits at the moment, so the only deck you're seeing the Royal Hogs in are the cycle variations with the Royal Delivery, the Cannon, and the Archer Queen. And even that version, I'm not seeing a whole awful lot, so they're kind of about average now. And guys, I actually think the regular Royal Recruits are in D tier. They are just very bad in this meta and hard to use. I just think things like Goblin Drill and Giant decks in general counter them very 
very effectively, especially when there's things like Bowler and just other splash cards. They just have a hard time fitting inside of decks at the moment and getting value. So I think they dropped quite a bit and are one of the worst cards in the game. I'm going to actually put the Skarmie in F tier. I think kind of like the Rascals, I don't normally put the Skarmie in F, but I'm just thinking about it. And recently there's just no one that ever plays this card. There's really no reason to use it just because of all the spells in the game. It doesn't fit well in any deck. So I don't really see how I could put it higher than F at this point. I think maybe it could use a small buff or a rework. I'm actually going to go ahead and put the Skeleton Barrel in F2. That might seem a little harsh for it, but I think at the moment, because there's almost no one running Mortar right now too, and that was kind of the only deck you saw it in, and now when you do see Mortar, you're never seeing it with the Mortar, and Mega Knight Skelly Barrel, that pretty much fell off completely. So no one really is playing the Skeleton Barrel. I wouldn't mind seeing it get a small buff, either that or the Skeleton Army. The Skeleton Dragons are going to be going in A tier. Probably no surprise here because Golem and Lava are so good in the meta. And of course, Skeleton Dragons oftentimes are people's choice in those decks. So they're just a very strong support card, especially when there's a tank in front of them. They can be really obnoxious to deal with. Skeleton King is going to be C tier. I think it's okay. You see it sometimes with the Golem, maybe with the Royal Giant, maybe with Elixir Golem, but in general, it's not really a requirement in a lot of decks, so I kind of consider it to be about an average champion at the moment. I do think it's a bit better than the Golden Knight and the Monk, but I don't really think it's anything too crazy. The Skeletons are going to go in A tier. I kind of think they're about equal strength to the Goblins right now. The Skeletons, you can use them with the Goblin Drill if you want. You can use them in side of Expo or a lot of the other cycle decks, just like the Goblins. I feel like people now are kind of using either one of these and between them, there isn't one that really comes out on top anymore, which is what the used to be the case a few months ago for the Goblins. The Sparky's going in D tier. In this meta, it is just very, very bad. Pretty much everyone running the Goblin Giant isn't using the Sparky with it. They're preferring to use other support cards like the Giant Skeleton or the Bowler instead. So the Sparky is just kind of practically useless at the moment. The Spear Goblins are going to go into D tier as well. They're not really played in many of the decks in this meta. A lot of the Drill decks pretty much never play them. Minor decks don't really play them anymore, and it's just because of the meta shift. They're just something that has kind of fallen out of the meta quite a lot. The Tesla guys is gonna go in A tier. I believe it's the best building right now. I don't think it's S tier though, because I believe the Evolved Tesla is what's very, very strong with that really gigantic health boost. And the Evolved Tesla is what so many people are running with the Goblin Drill. You actually don't typically see the regular Tesla get played inside a Goblin Drill decks. Typically when you see the Tesla, it is always Evolved and then one other evolution with it. So that's that is the reason why the regular one is not in S tier. And as per usual, the log is going into S tier. It is being played a lot, and as always, it is very versatile. You can use it inside of minor if you want to. You can use it with the drill. Now, sometimes people are going to use arrows inside of drill inside of the log, instead of the log, but you're pretty much always going to see either one of those played. You'll see it inside of Royal Giant, and then, of course, other cycle decks like Royal Hogs and Hog, whenever people are using those, of course, they're always going to have the log in that. The three Musketeers are going to go into D tier. Even though the pump is very good in this meta, I think most people prefer to use the pump with other things besides the 3M. However, the people that are very good with three Musketeers still make it work, so you still see it from time to time. The Tombstone is going to be in B tier. I think it's a pretty decent building. I can't put it in A though because no one is playing Splash Yard anymore. The only time you're seeing Tombstone nowadays is inside of Lava Hound decks, but when it is paired with Lava, it oftentimes does get a lot of value defensively. The Tornado is also going in S tier. It is for sure one of the best spells in the game at the moment, and just like the other spells in S tier, it pairs very, very well with the Goblin Drill, and not just the Goblin Drill, but also the Evolve Bomber, so you can line everything up and have it go on the tower. You don't only see it, though, inside of Cycle decks like the Goblin Drill. It is also very commonly played inside of Golem decks. In fact, most of the Golem decks do have the Tornado in it, and then, of course, you'll see 
in other things from time to time, like E-Giant. The Valkyrie's gonna go in C tier. She can kind of be useful defending the drill or using her in drill decks, but I think in general, the Knight is just getting a lot more value than her. Believe it or not, guys, the regular wall breakers are going into D tier, and a big part of it is because of the Cannoneer and the Dagger Duchess. The regular wall breakers, you can't even play them anymore at the bridge because against those towers, they're not even going to connect unless you have a tank with them. Both the Witch and the Wizard are going in F tier. I personally would like to see one of the two of those get a buff, and it's just because Poison is so good against them and other spells in general, and they just don't fit well in pretty much any deck. They're just not needed to be played ever. The Expo, guys, believe it or not, is B tier. It's a lot higher than I normally rank it, because in this meta, there's many people using it with the Evolve Bomber, the Evolve Knight, and of course the Evolve Tesla. That's one of the best pairs the Evolve Tesla has, is with the Expo, so it kind of helped revive it. So now we're seeing it a lot, and also you see Expo Pump often, so you don't only see it just with the Tesla, now it's played inside a Pump Bow again, too. The regular Zap is going in D tier. I promise, guys, everyone running Zap at the top, it's because they have the Evolve one, but the regular one is really, really trash in comparison. People are just cycling the regular one to eventually get to the Evolved, which is extremely powerful. Zappies honestly fell off a ton. I'm going to be putting them in D tier. You could even make the argument that they're F tier. No one's really playing them. You don't even see them in Recruits or Royal Giant anymore. Now we're at the Tower Troops. The Princess Tower, I'm going to put in B tier. In my opinion, between the three Tower Troops, she's for sure the worst. I think the Cannoneer and obviously the Duchess is way better than her. I mean, she has a moderate amount of health and of course everyone pretty much is used to the amount of health and the damage she deals but I just think we're at the point now where she is weaker and you're putting yourself at a disadvantage when you have her in your deck but that's not to say that she's completely horrible. The Cannoneer, I'm going to put in A tier. Before the Dagger Duchess was added in the game, the Cannoneer was seeing more success than the Princess Tower at the top of ladder because of that additional DPS he did. He was extremely useful, and the, when he was played, it was just very, very defensive, and it was hard to break through him compared to the Princess Tower, which is why I think the Cannoneer is ever so slightly better than the Princess Tower. But now we have the Dagger Duchess, which is obviously going in S tier. I made a video on her not too long ago where I was talking about how her usage rate is above 90%. In the top 1,000, pretty much 95% of people are playing her, and it's no surprise why. She has more health than the Princess Tower, and she just melts things so quickly. Yeah, she has to recharge, but that's where you have your other cards or your building in your deck to come in and help out. While she recharges, you're able to defend with other things, but that initial value she gets is so massive, and that is why in so many situations, in basically every single deck in the game, we are seeing that the Duchess is better than the Cannoneer and the Princess Tower, which is why she's very broken and needs a nerf, in my opinion. Now let's get into the evolutions. In my opinion, the best evolution in the game is the Evolve Bomber. Over half of the top 200 is using this thing, and it is just insanely versatile. Especially inside a Goblin Drill, it's ridiculously broken, but you see it inside of Giant, you see it inside of Golem, you see it inside of Lava Hound, Miner, you name it. You pretty much can use it in just about any deck you want to. The ability is absolutely broken because it's only one cycle, and when you play it at the bridge, it's just getting so much chip damage and oftentimes forces your opponent to have to overcommit on it, or if they don't have an answer in cycle, it's just getting so much damage. The second best evolution in the game, in my opinion, is the Evolve Zap. Oh my goodness, did I underestimate how good this card was going to be, especially in heavier decks with the Giant, with the Golem, with the Lava Hound. I'm actually convinced it's part of the reason why Beatdown made such a big comeback because the Evolve Zap just pairs so, so well in those decks. I mean, it's practically a fireball. When you get down an Evolve Zap, it's a fireball that stuns for the most part for only two elixirs so it's pretty much no surprise why it is a very very good evolution the third best evolution in my opinion is the evolved knight even after that nerf it got it has an insane amount of health and stays alive for so long it's also incredibly versatile you of course are seeing it all the time with the goblin drill but you can also use it with the miner and even inside of heavier decks like golem people choose to use it. I just think it is for sure still the third best evolution in the game. 
The fourth best evolution in the game, and kind of like the Evolve Zap, I definitely underestimated the Evolve Tesla. It is insane, of course, with the Goblin Drill, which is probably no surprise why it's one of the best Evos right now. It's very good with the Miner, and of course, it is also amazing with Expo. And on defense, it's just getting so much value, especially because with the ability, it has 20% more health. So it's not even that stun effect and that radius it spawns. That's not even the really OP part against uh, about it. It's mostly the health boost that makes it really strong. I still think the Evolve Skeletons are one of the stronger Evos even after that nerf they got where they're not respawning the same way they did before. They're of course amazing inside of cycle decks like with the Goblin Drill, with the Hog Rider, with the Royal Hogs, and then sometimes you could even use them in some heavier decks if you want to to keep your cycle quick and then of course when your opponent doesn't have that good spell in rotation they are just getting infinite value and continue to respawn like crazy. The next best evolution, I think, is the Evolved Barbarians, especially because this is a beatdown meta. We are seeing them quite a lot inside of Golem and inside of Lava Hound, where they're getting a lot of value on the defensive end, because there's a lot of times where when you go in for a Lava or a Golem in the back, you need something like the Evolved Barbarians to defend when your opponent rushes you in the opposite lane. Next up is going to be the Evolve Royal Giant, which I'm going to put in A tier. I don't think the Royal Giant is as good evolved as the other evolutions as I mentioned, but there is sometimes where that health boost and that ability where it knocks stuff back that are next to it can be kind of useful, but I just think it's about an average evolution at the moment. The Evolved Valkyrie, I'm going to put in A tier because ever since it got that health buff, that has helped her out quite a lot. And because Lava Hound is very good in the meta, the Evolved Valk pairs very well with the Lava. And she's also kind of decent inside of Drill decks. And there's a ton of Drill. So I think she's around where the Royal Giant is in strength at the moment. Next is the Evolved Battle Ram. The Evolved Battle Ram probably isn't as good as people initially thought it would be. People thought it was going to be the most broken evolution, or at least top three, and me included, I thought it was going to be very strong, but now we're realizing it's kind of average because it's fairly easy to counter, and because it's two cycles as well, you're probably not going to be able to get it down as often as you want to during the match, and it doesn't pair very well in many decks except P.E.K.K.A. Next is going to be the Evolved Wall Breakers. Believe it or not, guys, these fell off quite a lot, and a big reason for that is because of the Dagger Duchess. Ever since the Dagger Duchess came in the game, it defends the Evolved Wall Breakers so well that less people have just ended up playing them as a result, and now they're kind of one of the weaker evolutions, all because of the meta shifts. Next is going to be the Evolved Bats. I don't think they're too good at this point in time. You see them a bit inside of Giant, but besides that, they're not played anymore with the Miner like we used to always see them with. Now we got the Evolved Archers. These kind of fell off a little bit too because kind of like the Evolved Bats, you usually only see them with the Giant inside of Giant Graveyard. You don't really see them played inside of Cycle Decks anymore. Next is going to be the Evolved Mortar. Of course, it's better than the regular Mortar, but I still think even the Evolved version isn't really that great among the other evolutions. Just because in this meta, it's really hard to fit it inside of your deck, and you're just much better off using the evolutions that are a lot stronger, especially because of how good the Drill is. You can't really pair the Evolved Mortar with the Drill. We're in our bottom three now. The Evolved Firecracker is way better than the regular Firecracker, but I think even the Evolved Cracker, not that good compared to the other evolutions because Cycle in general is a lot worse right now because of the Duchess. And of course, the Evolved Firecracker, you pretty much can only play her inside of Cycle decks, which is kind of what the main problem is. The Evolve Royal Recruits fell off a ton. They were one of the best evolutions in the game, but because of the gigantic meta shift and probably because of the Duchess too, they got significantly worse and now they are extremely weak. So there's hardly anyone playing them anymore because there's not really any deck they fit in and they're just countered by so many things this meta. But the worst evolution in the game is still the Evolve Ice Spirit. Yes, the Evolve Ice Spirit is A tier, even though the regular Ice Spirit is and the reason for that is because it takes up one of your evolution slots and you're much better off using one of the better ones. The Evolve Ice Spirit is hardly that much better than the regular Ice Spirit because that refreeze effect hardly gets any value in a lot of situations. Let me know what you guys think of my list. Make sure to like and subscribe if you guys enjoyed the video.